the KSO show is back. I'm Derek Young. Going to be a one-man show today. I'm going to discuss a little bit. I know we've already written some things, and everyone's probably listened to the press conferences that we've had a couple of days ago with the offensive assistants. But I'm just going to touch on, I guess, some notes that kind of jump out to me, jump off the page to me, um, that stood out as noteworthy items that we heard from those offensive coaches. And, of course, the first uh, – actually, I forget the order that we spoke to them, but – the first one I'll speak about is when we spoke with quarterback coach Colin Klein. And, and like I did with Chris Klein, and I asked Colin Klein, you know, your first year it was a new system, offensive system under Chris Klein and Courtney Messingham. So Skylar Thompson's learning that system. Everybody's learning that system. You think, you know, you're going to have more people comfortable with that system, be able to unlock more of that playbook in year two, but Skylar goes down, you're back to a first-year quarterback all over again. So this – could be hopefully the first year that we they don't have a first year quarterback within the system. Does that help them unlock more of the playbook, unlock more of the offense? Do they have more at their disposal? And, and in a roundabout way, both Kleiman and Colin Klein have, have agreed that they do. That the, and it's not just the quarterback position, but obviously there's a lot of comfort and with the playbook and the entire offense from Skylar Thompson, but the offensive line too. And a lot of their offense is dictated just how good this offensive line is, how much experience they do have. First year, they had a they had a really experienced offensive line, but that, they were all in that offense for the first time. And then last year, every starter is a new starter. So the offensive line is kind of going through the same thing as the quarterbacks are. Another noteworthy item we felt like when we spoke to Colin Klein is he did reveal that Tyler Thompson the as good as he's ever had. So it's good to see him responding well to the injury and being fully recovered and practicing without any restrictions or limitations or obvious, you know, problems or you know any sort of you know continuing signs of injury they're all gone uh shoot i, I think the ball's jumping out of his hand probably you know as, as good as it ever has um you know i think even uh from being able to rest i think some of his other you know just his whole body you know i think is, is fresh you know and you can see that and and uh he's attacking it and and has a lot of confidence in it so uh one day at a time but so far so good and the same could be said for tight end Daniel e. Matterbebe. Um, no, you know, lingering signs of injury, according to tight end coach Jason Ray, who we spoke to, and he spoke very glowing, glowingly about a Matterbebe. Not just that he was looking healthy and showing no signs of injury, but that he was also even more athletic than what we saw out of Briley Moore last year. Briley Moore, very productive tight end transfer last year for the Wildcats. But they got another one in a matter baby, and he takes that athleticism maybe another step, maybe another couple steps. That's the clear difference between the two. Bradley Moore maybe more strong, and he was in you know one system for a long time, being in Northern Iowa, and kind of really probably more comfortable within an offensive playbook. A matter baby has had to learn far different ones, so he hasn't really been able to grasp a, a full offense yet. So there's differences between the two, but if from a positive standpoint, probably more athletic tight end this year with the Matter Bay Bay as compared to Briley Moore. Um, Daniel is a little bit more fluid just in terms of his athleticism, the movement skills. Uh, as far as knowledge of football, it's probably about the same. I know that, you know, with Briley's background, he's at one place consistently, um, you know, had some coaching changes and things, but was pretty consistent with position coaches at, at Northern Iowa. And so he had a consistent throughout, you know, what he was doing. Uh, but they both saw a lot of football in their time. But the biggest difference probably just fluidity and, and athleticism. Briley was still an athlete. Uh, you know, he was uh, you know, a guy that we're going to be able to use in split zone and then obviously get him in the, in the flats. And similar things we'll do with Daniel, but probably just athleticism was probably the main difference. And then the, the final two coaches that we spoke to both braved about their position groups. You could tell because Brian Anderson and Connor Riley, I'll be honest, those two are a little bit more critical about their own guys usually. They're not – usually as glowing, usually as optimistic, but they gushed over their guys, which was a clear departure from what they typically present in an interview setting or in a media setting. So to me, that speaks volumes to how they feel about what this offensive roster looks like so far in fall camp. And that's a good thing if you're a Kansas State fan. Brian Anderson, probably the biggest takeaway is how much he raved about Joe Irvin. Um, Chris Kleiman has done it too, um, both in Arlington and then to open up fall camp at his press conference that was inside Veneer. We, we spoke to the offensive assistants just uh, outside the, the grass practice fields. But Brian Anderson, I mean, gushed, 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 gushed about Joe Irvin and just 
how fast he's playing. Chris Kleiman said that he's not the fastest player on a team, but he plays the fastest. And Brian Anderson echoed that sentiment too. So obviously Deuce Vaughn is 1A at running back on this team. But I wouldn't say a close number two, but a clear cut number two for this team in the backfield right now is Joe Irvin. And he's someone that they have the absolute most trust in right now. And that's a good thing because um, it gives them another playmaker, even when Deuce is not on the field or, you know, when they're on the field together, because we'll probably see some of that this year too. So this maturity. I mean, that's all it is with every football player. It's the maturity part of things. How do you handle things? How you handle your business when you're not in the facility? Are you t are you being a pro by studying your playbook? And he's doing those things. And that's the that's just the process for all of them. The last coach I'll touch on was Connor Riley, like Brian Anderson. I touched on it already, but he is gush gush gushed about his offensive line room, cracking jokes, something we don't typically see from Connor Riley. Callis Robinette of the Kansas City Star, Wichita Eagle, asked him. You know, you know, what was your instant reaction when you uh, first uh, learned about Noah Johnson, you know, the starting center last year, returning for another extra season? And he asked Kellis if he was married and, you know, how did he feel when when she said yes? So obviously he's pretty excited to have Noah Johnson back, pretty excited. He called Noah Johnson a stud, called Cooper BB a stud. I mean, he's, he's throwing, out, throwing out the stud term, and it's just not something we typically hear from a Kansas State coach altogether but especially Connor Riley who tends to be a little bit more of a hard you know what on his guys even in media settings so what was your reaction when Noah said he was coming back I don't know you married <laughs> what was your reaction when your wife said yes <laughs> you know so um I don't know maybe that says it the fact that he's gushing about his group probably shows how much confidence he has in them. He even mentioned another pretty good takeaway here, and I thought um, it's really exciting for fans to hear, I think, because I mean, we at KSO, we said how all along how good of a prospect and how elite of a prospect Andrew Langang was uh, on the offensive line. One, probably the best recruit, that they, and perhaps the best recruit they've signed since they've been in Manhattan, and he's already getting time with some of the older players. That started a few days ago now. Um, not saying he's in the two deep because he probably isn't, though maybe he is. Well, you know, I can't really, don't really know those specifics, but we know he's taking reps with them um, at times in practice and that he's earned the right to do that by his performance. So that's a strong endorsement just by how good of a recruit and how good of a prospect he was, but also how quick he's acclimating to the college experience and the offense at Kansas State and picking up the coaching and, and embracing you know, learning and absorbing all that new information from Connor Riley and the other coaches um, and Courtney Messingham, obviously the offensive coordinator. So that that's a pretty intriguing part. I um, hope you learned, you know, quite a bit of different information regarding the offense when we speak to the defensive coaches, which I think is not for another week, a week and a half. We'll do the same thing and you'll get all the, the new and pertinent information that relates to that side of the ball as well. You've been listening to the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young. Tell your friends.